What? What, what, what? What the hell is this? Harumph, 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 harumph. I didn't get a harumph out of that guy. Give the governor harumph. Harumph. You watch your ass. I see you shiver with anticipation. Let the show begin. Hey, hey, everybody, this is David Heretic coming at you with another edition of Reactions, Reviews, and Rants. And tonight! Tonight! All right, making their debut on the channel tonight! Tonight! We have the Melvins. Yes, indeed. How about that? The Melvins on this channel. Who would have ever seen this one coming? All right, uh, this is a request from Chris Driver. Chris wanted to see me react to this song by the Melvins called A History of Bad Men. Now, the Melvins, I've heard of them. I've heard a couple of songs by them, but this is not one of those songs that I heard. I, I don't think it is. I don't think I've heard this song before, but there is a chance, actually, that I may have heard this song before and I just don't know it. So... As always, if I start listening to the song and I suddenly go, oh, wait a second. I've heard this before. I'll let you know. That's the truth. You know me. I'm going to be honest with you guys. This was posted by Melvin's Topic, and the video has 862,746 views. It'll get you there. Other than that, there's really nothing else left to say. Link to the original video will be down below in the description for your viewing pleasure at your leisure. Let's get started. What do you say? Are you ready? Are you ready? Because here we go. All right, here we go. The Melvins with a history of bad men. All right, let's do this. All right, boy, let's do this. Kind of that dirge feel, that slow You know, that, that kind of slow pulse, drive, you know, kind of feel to it. Like a slow march, almost. Very steady, unwavering um, feel to it. I liked the beginning with all the symbol flare and all the symbol color, using all these different types of symbols. I heard splashes, I heard chinas, I heard, uh, I mean, crashes, obviously, I heard them. I heard ice spell, I heard, uh, God, I forgot what the name of the symbol is with the holes in it. They have, like, the, the tacks going through. I forgot what those are called. 
But I, I heard them. They're, they're a very distinct sounding symbol. Um, because it rattles. It's, it's kind of a unique sound to it. I forgot what that symbol's called, though. Uh, but I, I heard a lot of different symbol usage. And that was cool. That was really cool. Uh, all done within context. All done very tastefully. Um, the rest of the song, I'm not 100% sure about. I, I don't know if I'm liking this or not. I, I Part of me does... But a lot of me doesn't. I, I don't know. Maybe I have to just, if I keep listening to it, maybe it'll grow on me. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Let's, let's keep going for right now. Two things of note there. Um, first of all, the harmonies, very well done. And I, I'm, I'm liking those harmonies in particular because they were dirty. They weren't exact. They weren't like Pro Tool, Beyond Belief, and Auto Tune, Beyond Belief to form a perfect third. They were a little, I mean, it was there. The, the third harmonies were there. The perfect third harmony was there. You know, one, three, and five. It was a, it was a major third, uh, one, three, five, but... It wasn't perfect. And I think that's part of the reason why I liked it is because it kind of reminded me a little bit, a little bit of the Misfits. When they do harmonies, they're not perfect either. They're dirty and they're supposed to be dirty. It's not supposed to be robotic and clean. You know, it's supposed to have life to it. And it, it was really nice. I mean, the harmony was there. The harmony was established. They hit the notes. The pitch was just a tiny little bit off, but that's what gave it the charm of having that feel to it. So I liked that. The other thing is the tempo gradually increased. It gradually got faster a little bit. Not a lot, but a little bit. It probably over the course of that entire chorus, it probably increased about, I would say somewhere between 10 to 14 beats per minute. And now it's the, and now it's, Coming back down. Now, the tempo is decelerating. Decelerando. It's coming back down again to where it was. So, interesting use of tempo. Uh, I, it's You don't hear too many bands do that. Not intentionally. Like, you'll hear bands rush all the time. Or you'll hear bands drag all the time. But you'll never hear it being done intentionally. And then, like, you know, speed up, speed up, speed up, speed up, speed up, speed up. And decelerate. It's interesting. It's really cool. All right, I'll admit it. This is growing on me a little bit. It is. It, it's it's starting to grow on me. So that's a good thing. Let's keep going. Yeah. 
this drummer is putting on a clinic of fills right now. And it seems like he's progressing. He's doing, he started out with a simple fill, you know, eighth note, you know, another eighth note. And then he went up to like a triplet fill and then he did a 16th. And then he did another 16th and he did like a sextuplet fill. And it just seems like he's getting more and more aggressive and more and more progressive. So interesting. Love how that's happening, actually. I'm kind of digging that drum work. I kind of am. Not going to lie. Um, the tone that the guitar and bass are getting with their distortions. And yeah, the bass is using distortion. Um, very thick, but not overly thick. Not to the point where it's becoming muddy. It, it It's getting up there, though. It, it's like walking right up to the edge of that cliff, but not quite to the edge. It, it, they're like about two feet away from the edge of the cliff right now. When it comes to their to being full to muddy, you know, it, it's not quite muddy yet, but it's getting there, but not to the point where it's unpleasant. It's just very, very thick. I, I dig that. I really dig that. Let's keep going here. Those of you who've been watching the channel for a while, you know how I feel about like cacophonous endings, endings that just like they sound like total and utter chaos. So you know how I'm feeling about this right about now. I got no problem with it as long as it has a resolution and as long as there is a reason. If all they're doing is just making noise for the sake of making noise, I'm not about that. I'm not thrilled with that. So let's see what happens in the next 20 seconds. I don't know about that ending. I liked pretty much everything else other than those last like 40 seconds. I don't know about that ending. Hmm. I have some thoughts and I will share them with you in the review. Well, there you go, folks. That was the Melvins with A History of Bad Men. This was their request from Chris Driver. All right. On a scale of 1 to 10, I am going to give that a 7.6. Yep, 7.6. I feel good with that score. Let me tell you why. Why? Okay. Um, The intro with all the different symbols, using it for symbol color, Really cool. I liked hearing all the different types of symbols that were being utilized. Um, and it was interesting for the placement, usage where 
when, how long, which way they were panned. Uh, some great engineering work on this. I, I'm just gonna say, across the board, the engineering on this song was really well done. Like, really well done. Um, some very creative use of engineering on this. I'm, I'm gonna use some other examples in a little bit, but right there, just in the first like minute with all the symbol usage, really cool. Uh, the song kicks in. At first, I wasn't a big fan of the direction of the song. Like, the, the march feel was fine, that, that slow dirge type of feel. That was fine, I had no problem with that, but the direction that the guitar and the bass were taking, I wasn't a big fan of it at first. I will say, over the course of the song, I became a bigger fan of it. It grew on me, it did. It, it really grew on me, <laughs> like a fungus. No, I'm kidding. But no, I, but seriously though, it did grow on me and it, it, I did warm up to it, so that's fine. Vocally, um, good vocal delivery. I'm actually, uh, I think of uh, the entire thing, I think I dug the vocalizations the most out of the entire song. Uh, great, powerful vocal delivery. Not 100% uh, totally accurate, like uh, sonically, or and I don't even know if sonically is right, like pitch, okay? We're talking about pitch right now. Not 100% clean, not 100% accurate, but in a song like this, I think, if the, I think if the vocals had been 100% clean and auto-tuned and everything like that, I don't think it would have fit as well. I don't think this. I don't think the vocals would have fit the context of the style of song as well as they did. So I'm glad the vocals were a little bit dirty. It added to the song, uh, especially my favorite part: those three-part harmonies. Uh, we had the one three fives. You had the major three chords, which was really nice. Um, well done, well placed. Uh, ultimately though, this song came down to mixing and engineering. A lot of effects going on, in particular on those cymbals. Uh, throughout the song, constant panning. Uh, I even heard towards the end of the song, I think at about the, about the two minute mark, uh, two minutes from the end of the song I mean, uh, so it'll be about the four minute mark. I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think I started hearing some backmasking effects on some of those cymbals. Now, that is done one of two ways, or actually done one of three ways. And I'm willing to bet the third way is the way they did it. Uh, first way, you independently mic every single cymbal and every single drum, and you really zero in on every single mic to, to focus on that one cymbal you wanna work with. That's dangerous because mics are sensitive and they're gonna pick up other cymbals. So unless you are just absolutely noise gating the hell out of those cymbals, that's gonna be very difficult to do. Option number two, isolating. Uh, you, you go back, and so you record your basic drum track, right? Then you go back and you record just individual hits and you mic those, just individual hits in certain spots. That's a lot easier to do that way because then you can engineer that one cymbal hit because that's all the track is picking up is that one cymbal hit. That's option two. Now, option three, and this is, I'm willing, I would be willing to bet money on this. Option three is what they probably did and they just pro tooled it. They went into their catalog, they found a cymbal hit that they were looking for already pre-mixed, already with the back masking, or already panned hard right or panned hard left, whatever they're looking for, and they did it all in Pro Tools, digitally. You'd be amazed what you could do with Pro Tools these days. You could create an entire drum pattern and it sounds like real drums. Like, the, the filters and the patches that they have sound real. Uh, there's a very strong possibility that that is what they did. And there's no, look, I find no fault in it at all. It's for the purpose of recording. Will they ever be able to duplicate that live? No, obviously not. But I also very seriously doubt that they play this song live. This does not sound like a song that is done live. So, but for the purpose of a recording, it works perfectly fine. But again, that comes down to engineering. And that's one of the reasons why I think I dug this song the most is because of the engineering of the song, all the panning, the layers, it sounded great. 
especially within the cymbals and the usage of cymbals and drums is where most of the engineering really came into play. So, great job on the engineering. Uh, they took a they, they took what was I would still consider a really good song, just a low really good song, but because of the engineering, it brought it up to like a 7.6 from like a 7.2. So that's why they're getting the 7.6 for more than anything else is because of the engineering. But nonetheless, they're getting that 7.6, which is a really good score. So 7.6, final score, I have spoken. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of Reactions, Reviews, and Rants. Hope you all enjoyed the show. Hopefully, I was able to entertain you. If I was able to put a smile on your face and brighten your day, then you did my job, and I'm so glad I could do it. If you did enjoy the show and you would like to see more videos like this, feel free to join the fan base by clicking on that button down there. Yeah, you know the button I'm talking about. Click on that button, join the fan base, and become one of us. Now, for whatever reason, if you don't feel like clicking on that button, that's okay. I still respect you. Also, if you did enjoy the video, please feel free to give the video a thumbs up. It'll do me a world of good, and it will do you absolutely no harm whatsoever. Finally, if you guys do join the fan base, you will find a bell down there that you can click on. By clicking on that bell, it'll keep you up to date on everything happening with this channel, including when new content gets dropped. So, if you want to stay in the know, click on the bell, and you'll stay in the know. Well, that's going to do it for the night, folks. Until next time, this is David Heretic signing off, reminding you to stay fabulous and support each other. Later, peace.